Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Liberate Lunations. My name is Eleonora and today we're going to be talking about the total solar eclipse that happens in Sagittarius on December 3rd with its peak time of 11.42 p.m. for Pacific Standard Time. Now this is the last eclipse that's going to be happening on the Gemini Sagittarius axis for a while. Um, after this we're officially moving to the year and a half cycle of Taurus Scorpio axis eclipses. So if you are somebody with uh, Sagittarius or Gemini rising or prominent placements in Gemini and Sagittarius, you can take a fucking breath after this um, and I'm sending you so much love. But without further ado, let's get into these aspects. I'm going to preface this with do not do any manifestation work that you are not ready to deal with after. Eclipses, the energy is too chaotic. The luminaries, both the sun and the moon, are not working with the energies that they are used to on a regular new and full moon. So please, that's important. Be careful. Just sit, reflect, journal, release. You can do all that. Meditate, take a bath, take a walk, um, whatever you want. Just don't actively manifest unless you are ready to deal with what you put out coming back times 10. Starting off with Mars and Scorpio, square Jupiter and Aquarius. So usually this aspect can be good to take action in things, goals, intentions that we want to achieve, but it can also come out a little bit um, or come off a little bit abrasive and out of touch. Um, and since this is an eclipse, I just suggest we use this energy to reflect on what we truly want to go after, whether it's today, this week, this month, this year, and five years. Um, oftentimes, this aspect kind of reads as impulsive, but we can utilize it to think of the big picture and outcome before we actually make the move. Um, and we can take advantage because Mars is in Scorpio. Mars in Scorpio really digs deep. It's pretty, um, it's pretty like detective mode. So really trying to figure out and see like what do I want to expand upon that's in there but really think about it and reflect journal if you need to meditate on it um connect with your spirits your guides um ask for guidance you really have no time to this is a time to sit back and relax and just utilize that to um reflect and move ahead next up we do have mars and scorpio sextile venus and pluto and capricorn this kind of reads is like a, more of like a sexy mystery explosive kind of like ooh uh, energy to me i feel like both scorpio and capricorn are really determined signs that will go through great lengths to achieve what they want and what they desire um and both mars and venus represent you know relationships and dynamics desire value indulgence and then you add pluto to the mix and it just enhances this as a like transformative and deeper experience okay now i'm gonna pull a card for you guys um as always energy that we can find grounding or some sort of message that will help us um either release or um you know set intentions but for this time since it's a total solar eclipse we just had the partial lunar eclipse in taurus um lord um so now we have this total solar eclipse um so let's see what messages come through what we need to know two babies popped up oh, hmm, the fifth house ha 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 and lilith Okay, uh, so fifth house, let's start with the fifth house. Um, it's creativity, it's play, it's romance, um, it's kids also, it's children, but it's our mainly our creative power, our sexual power, our play. It's not really our serious relationships, but our romantic relationships, like our flings, our, you know, I'm dating and I'm experiencing and I'm having a good time. Um, maybe that's just... Um, kind of encouraging us to tap more into um that little child inside of us maybe connect with our inner children um do some activities that you liked as a kid whether it was painting drawing riding a bike um cooking watching tv napping whatever that is whatever makes your inner child happy i think we should probably 
do that and um, also be really creative this time around. Um, this being a technically new moon, um, we can put out those intentions into some sort of art, um, into some sort of drawing that can be journaling too, that can be writing. Um, that's why it's not like you guys don't have to do anything. You can do, you can reflect, you can journal, you can still release. I wouldn't intentionally put my intentions out there if that makes sense. I hope it does. Um, so I don't know much about Lilith. I just know that she is a bad bitch. Um, but obviously it's the shadow. Um, so keywords are shadow, darkness, power, equality, mystery, wild, pettiness. Um, which I, this kind of makes sense actually with Pluto coming up. It, it seems, it reads to me. But it says when we stand up for ourselves, we, often, we are often faced with backlash and further punishment. Lilith asks that we don't back down, continue to push forward. In fact, you have the capacity to downright destroy those who continue to oppress you. Um, call upon this powerful figure of womanhood when you feel like you don't have enough strength left. Sometimes strength is just walking away from the people you are told you are supposed to love or the goals and expectations others have set for us. Yikes. Um, okay, well... Um, that's pretty good. I don't know what to say about that. I feel like she was pretty cutthroat and very, uh, very direct, kind of like get rid of the bullshit. Um, if people are asking more of you than um, they're entitled to, or, you know, they're not really meeting you where you're at, they're not um, valuing your time, your effort, uh, your love, your work, whatever it is, they can F right off. Okay, so for Crystal to recommend for this solar eclipse in Sag, I'm going to recommend Citrine, not only because it's an eclipse, but also because I just, like I said, recommend sitting, reflecting, journaling, meditating, releasing, versus bringing something new or manifesting this time around. Uh, but Citrine is great for working on yourself. It's great for the solar plexus chakra. Um, it's great for confidence. It brings about happiness, balance, and it also makes sure make sure that your energy um, keeps in the frequency of being prosperous and abundant. As always with our recommended events, make sure you check out the links below for our eclipse events. Um, we always have amazing events going on both live stream and in person. So make sure to check those out under in the description box. Also during eclipses, I do like to pay attention to my dreams a lot. So I'm gonna link a book that I personally have below. Um, I have it here is the dream dictionary from a to z and um most of the times i don't remember my dreams because i tend to just move a lot as soon as i'm up i'm just moving i'm on my phone and then i just forget um but every now and again when i forget when i um can remember my dreams i go to this book and it's just kind of like a nice insight to like what it could mean and it just helps me interpret them in the way that i um I perceive it and I can relate my life experiences to it. Um, so check it out. It's linked below if you guys want it. Other than that, I think that is all I have to say about this total solar eclipse of the heart. No, in Sagittarius. Um, so as always, if you guys need us, you can DM us, email us, or call us at the shop. We always got you. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, you can leave them below. You can reach out to us. Otherwise, I hope everybody is healthy, happy, sending you much, much love, many, many blessings, and have a great eclipse in Sagittarius. Bye. <laughs>
um, empowerment to move someone from fear to being empowered. When you're feeling stuck, when you can't answer the question yourself, when you find yourself in a little bit of a spin out. I don't think there's anything that a reading is not good for. You know, the perfect time for a reading can be any time. We are constantly changing, so we are constantly coming up against obstacles or reoccurring patterns that we need to check in with. When things just feel really heavy and dark and you might be a little confused about some of the things on your, on your path, maybe certain relationships or opportunities. So we all have blind spots, so when you find yourself in a blind spot, that's a really good time to get a reading. So readings are good to check in to find out where your progress is through the eyes of someone else who's holding you in the highest good for all concerned. Change is always good ultimately and sometimes it's hard to see that and readings bring you back to that center of what it's for for you.